Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This has been a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Doom Patrol. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Obviously, we have Jane still being pissed at Cliff, and I love him making the sandwiches. Like, oh, this is just like the way Baby Doll likes him, and she slams the door in his face, and the sandwiches are all over the place. He's like, well, what the fuck? I'm not going to fucking clean that up. Okay, I'm going to do it this once, but just that's it. You know, so it's kind of sucky. Because once again, I think it's the thing of Jane, like, you know, she thought she saw Cliff one way, and now that she saw him another way, it's not just her. I mean, all her, not all of them, but some of her personalities are obviously, like, reflecting that. But, uh, well, we don't know how Baby Doll feels. I'm very interested to see what ends up happening about that. Like, is she forgiving, or is she just as scared of him now, too, because she saw that side of him? She was kind of freaked out the first time she saw him anyway, so that probably just adds element to that. Well, to be fair... Even after that, Baby Doll curled up to him. Wasn't that after that whole situation, or was that before? I'm fairly certain that was afterwards. So that, yeah, so we kind of do know how she feels about it. So, and maybe that's what pisses Jane off because, like, her other personas, like, some are okay with it, others aren't. But either way, uh, the team splits up this episode because they're looking for the Doom Patrol turns out which is so interesting because it's like yeah it's like what i thought it was it's like oh yeah they were already a team ahead of time and eventually they adopt a persona of all of that which it seems like that's the route that the show's going down but it's like they're heroes from the 50s and then like jane well it turns out rita actually dated one of the doom patrol steve way back in the day also it's kind of interesting because we saw a little glimpse into rita's past in the sense of like like, there was a guy who was trying to make moves on her, but basically kind of like a, oh, you want to be in my movie? Like, the fact of the matter is your name isn't what it used to be, so it doesn't bring, you know, people to the movies and stuff like that. And because she couldn't control her power, she ended up suffocating the guy. What was also, what was sweet, though, is his assistant was like, it looks like poor bastard had a heart attack. It's like, you were never here and let her go. Because I think she knew about what the circumstances were, and it's just like, you're a young woman, I'm not going to let your life get thrown away just because of this incident. I guess in her mind, it's kind of like, he was a scummy dude anyway. That's how I kind of chalked that up. But, um, it was interesting when they ended up getting there, because I was like, Especially when we saw uh, Minto again, I was like, he looks exactly the same. I'm like, it's literally everyone not aging. It's like, what the hell is up with that? Like, I thought, like, the Doom Patrol situations were kind of like their own. So it's like, everyone with superpowers not aging. And then I start thinking, like, is that like a metahuman thing? I was like, I was like, do metahumans age slow or something? Like, I was thinking something weird like that. But it turns out, obviously, we kind of break that down later on, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I did like the little uh, uh, reference towards Brain, because I thought so. Like, when they said Brotherhood of Evil, they were referencing Mr. Nobody being a part of I was like, I, I, I referenced uh, the Teen Titans cartoon, because that ends up being who they went up against. You know, it was like Gorilla Grodd and Brain. They even have Brain's uh, home whole thing there, and I thought that was kind of pretty neat. It's like, oh, the Brain's gone It managed to get away, but can't really do much without, you know, his tube and everything. I was like, oh, that's a nice little detail, because it's a villain I do know just because of the Teen Titans cartoon, so I just thought that was kind of interesting. Because if you don't know, like, I actually thought that's what DeVoe slash The Thinker, like, I knew that I didn't know Brain's name ahead of time. Like, it, obviously it's Brain, but it's like, I was thinking that The Thinker in The Flash, before we got introduced to him, was going to be that. That's what I thought it was a leading to. Turns out not to be the case. Obviously, two different people. It's, it's me going on a tangent, but nevertheless. But it's kind of interesting, because obviously it's like, okay, things are weird here. The place looks a little glitchy. I'm like, what the hell is that about? But no one else is really noticing it. And, you know, you have one of the people there being like, oh yeah, like, I'm married to Niles. We had a kid. And then Niles showed up. You're like, wait, what? And then everything with Minto and... Rita is kind of like a trip down memory lane because apparently their breakup didn't end well. We just kind of learned about that, but I get to that in a second. But it's like, what the hell is this whole thing about? Because even like, uh, uh, Irani was kind of like, depending on who you ask, like how the, the story would be different. Because like Minto's like, oh, we we whooped his ass essentially, beating uh, uh, Mr. Nobody. It's interesting. Like basically, he made like a hot air balloon that was shit like a butt and a jukebox to play the same song for twenty minutes straight. Well, over and over, but twenty minutes later, people went insane. Police got turned into pinatas, and then that was so disturbing. Like, oh, and the people being crazy, ripping them all apart, and eating the candy. And I was like, that is super morbid and super messed up. 
long. That is crazy, especially because you see that kid eating some candy and red is smeared all over his face. You're like, oh my god. Get and you see like one person rip the dude's head off and is dumping candy out. It's like, Jesus, that's some brutal stuff, dude. I mean, you can get away with that, obviously, because they're pinatas, but, like, if this was anything else, that would have been a gnarly thing. The real twisted thing would be that eventually, like, after, this, the thing, the big question is, do they stay candy, or do they eventually turn back into human beings? Because that had to be a grisly scene. I mean, that's brutal, dude. And so, you know, but then it turns out, Everything is a lie because this whole place is a construct. It's not even like because I was like, oh, is this? Because at first I was like, oh, is this like a school for metahumans and stuff? Like, because apparently Jane was supposed to have a room there and everything's kind of going down, right? And then it's like, oh, wait. And it's like, wait. Once we saw Minto in his real form and everything, I'm like, oh, it's like that explains you're actually an old man. So you're projecting like this image of you being a young man. I'm like, I was like, wait, is this supposed to be like a superhero retirement home because your powers are so dangerous? It's not necessarily that, which I'm sure there must be a place that, because it's like, I'm, that's never been something I'm aware of that was ever been tackled with like what happens when superheroes or superpowers get old. Like, you know, you might potentially lose your mind, so and might lose control of your powers and stuff like that. Um, it makes me think of, and I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on his name. It's like the Aquaman and Aqualad of like SpongeBob. Evil that I'm Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Jeez, I was stumbling on that. It kind of makes me think of something like that, you know? Um, but I thought that might be what it was heading into the direction. It's like, no, Mr. Nobody messed him up so bad. And even I was like, oh, that's what this whole thing was about. He wanted you to meet the Doom Patrol so you realize this is what happens when people challenge me. I don't kill you, I break you. And it's like, Jesus. I mean, to be fair, it's kind of, you know, how do you fight a dude that can literally rewrite reality like that? I don't, I don't know. Because even they couldn't stop him. Um, it seems because it turns out like the Doom Patrol was originally like a government project and stuff like that. He was there for Niles. And I guess that's why Niles doesn't visit them that often because it's a, you know, because later on Jane's like, oh, like he doesn't visit them because they're his broken toys. And I guess it's also because it's a reminder that they're in that situation because of him. He's the one that started this group. He put them on the map that led to Mr. Nobody finding them. Maybe he thought like, hey, maybe they'll be okay and they'll be fine. Nope. Because it was also, once again, it's like he was after Niles. And so there's this whole situation of like, because even Jane's like, so why was I supposed to have a room here? It's like, Niles never treated me like I was broken, like something was wrong with me. But that was the thing. Maybe for Niles, he felt like maybe there's some part of him that's thinking Jane was too messed up for even him to take care of. Just because all the 64 personas, like maybe it has something to do with something that Jane's not aware of about herself. Or maybe it's just that, like he probably thought like, they that Jane needed to be sedated kind of in an illusion like with Mento's whole situation because it might be the only way because like she might be too dangerous on her own because her and her personalities are literally too unpredictable so that's a circumstance around but to be fair like the dude uh running the place doesn't know interestingly enough I've, that actor I've seen him pop up in plenty of things the thing I always associate with him is the tv show numbers if you're familiar with the show you might know what I'm talking about if you're not you're not it's like a crime drama tv show nevertheless like that's one of the things that kind of associate my head when I think that I, there's something else to it, I just can't place it but nevertheless, it's interesting because we didn't get into his powers too much because he says that he's a medical professional and even Niles is like, oh, you know what you specialize at. And I guess like his powers can be very twisted or something for that to be his greatest fear because it seems like using his powers because he even said it like yeah, he doesn't really use them much these days. I guess maybe he's kind of like a metahuman surgeon or something like that, that he can slice and dice and relocate like people and their body parts like kind of like what you may if since I, if you're familiar with One Piece. He kind of reminds me of, I think he might be kind of like Law, how Law can kind of do that type of thing. Maybe it's something like that. Maybe it's nothing like that. Cause we, like I said, we didn't get to see his powers. We just kind of hear that it's something he's like, yeah, I don't really do that. So probably if you know comic books, you're like, oh my God, that's totally, what's his face, you know? So there's that. But it is sad to know that like, holy crap, like 
that ended up with happening to them because they ended up turning against each other and now they kind of have to live in this state of because for Minto like there was no problem for the fit past 50 years but then Rita showed up because Rita threatened the fake reality he had created they all had I mean because obviously like they were all kind of docile in their fake reality but it's because Minto kind of got distracted because Rita was like no, like, the fact is he's back, and he's like, no, we beat him. Here you are trying to dash on everything I've done, because for him, he was stuck in this delusion of, like, we're the best, we were, t yeah, we're good, blah, 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 and she broke that illusion, and, and you know, and it's kind of sad, and he starts trying to torture her. Like, everyone gets tortured by different things. Larry gets tortured by this doctor with these syringe fingers. I'm assuming that, cause I'm assuming it's supposed to be, like, a situation of maybe he tried to go back to the military. I, I, I didn't really catch what that was really about but it's like oh yeah like you did some great things it's like obviously you're not alone so I'm like because obviously there's a lot of Larry's life we don't know about before he got to Doom Man or like from him his wife leaving him and him pushing John away beyond that you know when he was kind of off on his own because of the radiation and stuff like that we don't know what kind of happened between there and Doom Manor so maybe there was a, a, a you know military guy that, that he tried to get back into the military try to do some good and things didn't go well. Whatever it was, it's something him and the spirit try not to remember. Then for Rita, it was like this actress, I guess, that ended up killing herself uh, because it ends up, I guess it was something Rita, because Rita, who she was back then, uh, she was very self-centered. She was, you know, who she was. And I'm guessing this might have something to do with her before she be, be before she ended up having her power. She was a very, I mean, she was still holding like when she got her power she was still trying to hold on to who she was obviously that's how the whole her and mental thing started it was actually kind of sweet but then mental broke the thing of like oh i won't read your mind unless you i get your permission but he read her mind about that whole situation like I, we don't really get the details on it but whatever it was rita has felt responsible for which is super messed up on his part because it's like why are you rummaging through her mind i guess it's like the danger of, of having a power where you get inside of people's head it's kind of hard to kind of separate those boundaries i guess it's like because rita always punished herself with it so i guess it's something that's always on her mind and if it's there i guess he just he happened to be inside her mind he he's just like oh probably for fun and then he ended up seeing that and so he starts blaming her for like like, it's like, oh, if I knew about this terrible thing you did, you know, maybe I should have read your mind for the beginning. I would have found out a terrible thing you did. None of this would have happened. So you can definitely understand why Rita didn't want to talk about that breakup. And then Jane's whole situation, the puzzle pieces, and the guy's like, sweet, sweet baby. Uh, I'm assuming that has something to do with the whole K situation. Like, whatever happened to her that kind of led to her kind of splitting into multiple like you know kind of the whole chain persona coming up and everything that being kind of the centerfold for what eventually happened to her that led to all these different versions of her i'm assuming that has to be the case it's so interesting because it plays a part in the intro because they're like puzzle pieces i thought like oh that's just supposed to be like a motif of the whole aspect of like she's like a puzzle piece like all these different pieces no like identity to a certain extent which is interesting because like everyone we actually think about it in amongst the doom patrol i guess that's kind of the big thing they all suffer from a identity crisis trying to figure out who and what they are but um uh, no it, it, it seems like it's also a literal thing connected to her past the whole puzzle pieces thing so i'm assuming it's some like terrible shit with this particular person because it was like a human guy's hand being like calling out to her trying to reach out to her so beyond that we'll have to wait and see but it was an enlightening experience in that regard because like for rita she has spent in the past, she decided who she wanted to be, because she, who she's ever always wanted to be was Rita, and for the past 60 years, she decided that Rita needed to be punished for what she did, and she hasn't really changed her mind, but for her, it's like, she doesn't want to be Rita anymore, because who Rita was was a very selfish person that never cared about anyone else, because obviously, like, for her, she was so self-centered at the time and stuff like that, and she doesn't want to fall back into those bad habits. She's actually in the process of changing the whole Elliot situation, awoken something in her, and she doesn't want to go back to being Rita, and, you know, and sadly, Elliot never came back, which I kind of figured might be the case, just because he is the unwritten book, so there's a the potential to summon a decreator again, so... I guess the whole point is not to bring him back. I think the recreator decided to do that on purpose, but maybe one, or maybe it's just who he is. Once he's gone, he's gone forever. Maybe I don't know. But um, aside, you know, it makes you wonder: is there any potential for that? They uh, come back and him to come back in any shape or form? Probably not. You know, uh, but for Rita, it's like I forgive you, 
and even to the point she's ripping down like her her room was supposed to be like it's literally a museum to herself you know a reminder of like this is who I am because she struggled so long to hold on to who she was she wanted you know which was kind of a bad thing and it seems like she is moving past that which is like some heavy ass character development in her regard you know because that's you know that was her entire identity and she doesn't know who she is without being you know Rita so it's definitely going to be interesting to see her story progress in that regard on the other side of things we had Cyborg um, it's interesting too because like the whole like you look at his arm thing which it seems like he's hiding from other people because he tries to hide it from Cliff I guess because part of him is starting to become more and more robotic like it just automatically like nanites or something just like healed it so I guess it's just like his body's just so mechanical that it's like oh this starts falling apart then we just replace it with more machinery to the point he's going become more and more maybe that's how you get him to look a little bit more like he does in well to be fair i guess he technically is like you i feel like well because obviously you don't see his entire body all at once but i guess he is more in line with like whether it be cyborg from teen titans cartoon or you know that's because that's the design i'm usually more accustomed to or even like him from justice league and um batman v superman and whatnot you know like fully like like the only human part of him is his face in this case he has parts of his arm and his finger so he isn't full but maybe that's going to be something we see later on as he takes more damage eventually his body just starts replacing itself and he becomes more and more robotic in that regard or maybe this is as far as it's going to go i don't know it's going to be interesting to see but obviously, you know, it's kind of interesting the whole conversation. Like, oh, we need, oh, Mr. Nobody, but his dad's like, oh, who's that? Uh, the JLA would be more, you know, just the League of America would uh, be, which I'm, I still don't know what the difference is between the JLA. I'm, I'm thinking of the Justice Society of America. Yes, nevertheless. Um, I take it back what I was saying because that's what I was confusing it with. Uh, nevertheless. Uh, what was interesting, though, it's like, oh, yeah, the JLA will handle that. And it's like, the fact that if he's not on their radar, he isn't worth knowing. It's like, he's just a super powerful villain that maybe they just don't know about. Maybe he's just been hiding out in the scenes for the past, like, decades. Because he got created back around World War II, and he's been still kicking it, and no one stopped him until now. So, I think that begs some questions why. And also, because obviously this all ties back into Niles, too. Like, what is, what did he steal back then um, from Fuchs? Um, the scientist, as well as like, why does well? To be fair, he is the one that made Mister Nobody because he tried to destroy a machine, and that led to Mister Nobody being made. Um, but be, beyond that, what else did he do to piss him off? We'll have to wait and see. But it's actually interesting. I love the whole thing about like uh, Cliff. they finding out that one of Cyborg's fingers is in uh, Cliff's arm. And he's like, your finger. Well, I forgot how he phrased it. Basically, your finger, your finger is stuck in me. He's like, don't you don't have to phrase it like that. He's like, get it the fuck out of me. And so it led, eventually led to an interesting conversation between Cliff and Silas. Because even Cliff's like, because Silas is like, after hearing everything that went down, it kind of made him go like, he seems like he doesn't care on some other points in time. But I guess you can make the argument it's because he cares too much. Obviously, he's worried about his son and everything. And hearing about the whole Mr. Nobody situation, he could have gotten killed. Like, that's why I guess for him, it's like, if he's working with like the Justice League, that's one thing. It's like, there's other pit, powerful, super powerful people to have his back. So it's a guaranteed good gig and even if he goes back to doing what he's doing before he's dealing with street thugs no super villain so it's okay but this is a situation he could have died but even cliff is like hey to be fair like yeah i don't like him being a boy scout and everything but hey if it you know it took courage to do what he did you know it stuck his neck out to save niles so you should cut him some slack and he's like the fact is you know i could have lost my son do you know what it's like to lose a child obviously not knowing anything about cliff and Cliff is like, yeah, I do. And the fact of the matter is, he's like, but I am someone who has a whole bunch of gr regrets. What would yours be? You know, and it's like, because Cliff made a lot of mistakes and he's kind of having to live with it. And he's basically telling Silas, like, if you don't fix this situation with your son, you're going to have a whole bunch of regrets. What was interesting, though, too, is like, apparently he was basically, Niles went to him about uh, Cliff's body design. And he had actually given him some design options, but... Niles kind of went with his own path. And maybe there's a particular reason why for that. Maybe it, it will come clear soon. Or maybe it is just simply kind of what Niles was saying where it's like, oh, he's so stuck. Like, uh, that Silas was saying that Niles is so stuck in his own ways, kind of doesn't want to be proven up by anyone. So uh, his pride gets the best of him. And he's just like, no, 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 I'm going to follow what I believe. We'll see. 
because um, some of the designs I've seen for uh, Robot Man Cliff look different, but to be fair, that also comes down to an artistic thing, because I'm sure, like, what I, some of the pictures I saw were probably, like, more recent representations, um, artistic, you know, illustrations of the uh, Doom Patrol. So, you know, I'm just curious, like, are they going to change him in any shape or form, or is he always going to look this way? But uh, it does seem like Silas is willing to kind of cut back. He's like, hey, you want to be here? It's okay. You know, you you, you got to be your own man. I, you've been telling me that, and it's about time I listen. I've cut on uh, privacy mode. This time, for real, I won't be listening in. So I was like, hey, that's good. But obviously, Vic still steals the um, flash drives and basically overrides all his programming, which is definitely going to be dangerous because obviously it's going to be, you know, obviously here dad's over overprotective and stuff like that. He puts these limitations in place because it's probably too much for you to handle and things are probably going to get bad from here. It's actually kind of interesting because there's a Teen Titans episode that kind of deal with the fact is that Cyborg will constantly enhance himself to go. It was like a fight against some other cybernetic dude, but his human side is actually the stronger side of him because Machines can only go so far. The human body can always give more. Whereas a computer can go 100%, the human body can go 110%. Like, and always push a little further. So that's kind of... That aspect, I'm wondering, is that going to play a role in this or not? Probably not. And also, Cliff, trying to get help, you know, uh, apparently trying to follow his daughter on social media. And he'd be like, okay, only friends can see her page. What about her fucking dad? And then, you know, Vic ends up helping, but it turns out her dad turns out to be um, home dude, which I'm assuming it's the way Cliff was getting super pissed. It has to be the dude that was sleeping with his wife, that whole situation. So the guy he ended up uh, knocking out with that champagne bottle, that large champagne bottle. So there's that. Um, obviously, it's like, which is interesting because even Vic was like, yeah, catfishing your own daughter, which is weird, but it's like, yeah. Um, so that's definitely going to be interesting, uh, to see Cliff, obviously, like, Cliff is getting more and more pissed, and he definitely has anger issues, so, I'm very interested to see, interested to see where all of this takes us, because obviously we're taking steps forward with everyone's respective stories, and I'm curious to see where they'll take us in the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about, so the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, I'd like to force and enjoy it, good day, and goodbye.